Kali Linux is the go-to Linux distribution for pen testing and ethical hacking. Today we're going to learn more on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Kali Linux is a Debian-based Linux distribution developed by Offensive Security targeted towards people interested in penetration testing and ethical hacking. Recent updates in January 2020 changed the desktop environment from the heavyweight GNOME to more lightweight XFCE, making Kali Linux much more snappy and responsive. Because Kali Linux is such a niche tool, it's not recommended for day-to-day -day use, such as responding to emails and checking Facebook. That's why we recommend that you install Kali Linux as a dual boot, or as we're going to do today, as a bootable USB. In order to follow this tutorial, all you're going to need is a USB stick, a USB formatting tool such as Rufus or Etcher, and a computer that you can install Kali Linux on. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the article, which is linked in the description. Let's get started. So to install Kali Linux ISO file or to create a bootable USB drive, you're going to have to use a USB formatting tool. Um, and today, the one we're going to be using is Etcher. And you can find, you can just Google Etcher and it'll take you to this website and it'll recognize the operating system you're using. And because I'm running on Ubuntu, it's going to recommend I download the Linux 64-bit um, architecture version. And this will just give me the .deb file and make it super easy to install. If you're using Windows, you can also use Etcher, but there's a tool that I use called Rufus when I'm on Windows, which I also recommend. So after you get that installed, you can actually go ahead, navigate to the Kali.org slash downloads page. And this will show you all the different um, .iso or image files that are available. And so as you can see, there's a couple to choose from. And so this first one, the 64-bit installer, is meant for computers with Intel uh, CPUs and a 64-bit architecture. And this is more meant for if you want a more heavy-duty dual booting or using it as the primary operating system on a certain computer. So this is the fully fledged Kali Linux and it comes with most or it comes with all of the um, pre-built packages. And the next one is that I'm going to talk about is um, Net Installer. And so this is, as you can see, the Kali Linux installer is 3.6 gigabytes, but this Net Installer is a much, much more lightweight, 420 megabytes. So it, it is so much more lightweight because it cuts out a lot of the packages that aren't as necessary. And they're, they're packages that you might want to use, so you're probably going to end up installing them. But this is for useful for people who have a slower connection and so they want to download all their packages in a piecewise manner rather than downloading them all at once. And then there's some um, par uh, parallels. So there's the installer, net installer, and live for 32-bit machines rather than 64-bit machine. Now the one I'm going to be focusing on today is the um, Kali Linux 64-bit live. And so this is for this is Kali Linux for people who want to create a live bootable portable version of Kali Linux that they can take with them wherever they go and deploy on a computer as they see fit. And this is a little more lightweight than the fully fledged installer version of Kali Linux, but it does come with more of the tools than um, this net installer version. So this is the one we're going to be using today. Um, you can either download it directly from the Kali Linux servers or um, you can download the torrent file, which is much faster than what I would recommend. And then after you got that downloaded, you're going to actually want to open Etcher. So, and then Etcher has a stupidly easy interface to use. So all you have to do is select the image, select the USB drive or SD card, whatever device that you're going to be formatting that uh, image to, and then you're going to flash. And so I'm going to select the, oops, it was in my downloads, the Kali Linux ISO, and it's going to say the issue, oops. You're going to select the .iso file that you want to format. You're going to want to select the, um, flash drive that you're formatting it to and you can change it and it's going to automatically recognize any external devices that are plugged into your um, computer and then all you're going to want to do is press flash and it's important to note that when you press flash you're going to be reformatting your flash drive so any information that was already on there is going to be completely wiped out and erased so be sure to use this on um, a flash drive that doesn't have any sensitive or important information on it so you avoid losing that. And so once you flash it, it's going to be about, because this is a smaller file, it's only about three gigabytes. It's going to take about five to 10 minutes. And after that, um, you're going to want to reboot your computer and we'll join you from there. So once you have the Kali Linux Live image formatted onto your USB drive, you're just going to want to uh, plug it into your computer and then restart. After you restart, you're going to want to um, enter your bio screen as I have here. To do that, it's a little bit different on every computer. You might have to cons um, look up your motherboard and consult the manual to find out how to boot to BIOS. But in my case, I just had to keep hitting the F2 key 
right after my computer restarted and it brought me here. Okay, so once we're in the BIOS menu, we're gonna have to do two things. First, we're gonna have to disable secure boot, and then we're gonna have to um, configure our BIOS so that it boots from the USB drive instead of the default mechanism already has in place. So again, every BIOS is a little bit different, so you're probably gonna have to look up the manual if you can't find it. But in my case, to disable secure boot, I'm just gonna navigate to the um, boot tab over here, and then I'm gonna go down to, um, oh, sorry, I'm gonna go up to secure boot, and then I can configure it there. I've already done it, so that's already taken care of. So now, after you have secure boot um, disabled, you're gonna want to change the boot priority, which I have here, um, to from its default option. So right now it's configured, the fir first it's gonna look in the motherboard and see it's gonna boot from um, a, a grub menu that I have set up. And then it's gonna go check my SSD, see if there's any operating system to boot from there, and then it's gonna check the USB, um, the USB drive. I want it to check that the USB drive, I want it to check the USB drive with Kali Linux on it first. So I'm just gonna go to boot option number one and change Asus to USB disk 2.0, which is the name of our USB device. And then after you do that, you can go ahead and um, exit your BIOS. And so I'm going to do that. And then we're just gonna save changes and reset. Yes. And now after that, your um, computer's gonna restart and then it's gonna boot um, from the USB drive containing Kali Linux Live. So now that we're here, we're gonna be granted a couple different options for how we wanna proceed with this version of Kali Linux. Because I installed the um, live image of Kali Linux, um, the first option is live system, which is just booting the OS from the USB stick. And then there's other options, like for example, live system fail safe mode. It boots into Kali Linux that is more secure if you're in a, I guess, dangerous environment or something like that. And then you can also actually install Kali Linux onto your um, computer's hard drive or solid state drive from here. But today, as I said, we're gonna be focusing on the live system, so I'm just gonna hit that tab. Give it a couple seconds, and you should be plopped right into the Kali Linux desktop. So now we're actually here in Kali Linux proper. And so, as you can see, the first thing you can notice, if you're familiar with Kali Linux at all, is the new XFCE um, desktop environment, which, in my opinion, is a lot cleaner than the version of GNOME that they are previously using. And it's also a lot more lightweight, as I was saying earlier. So hopefully Kali Linux runs a little bit faster on um, whatever device you're using it on. And because this is a bootable USB, you don't know exactly what kind of hardware you're gonna be running on, and sometimes you'll be running it on lower end hardware. So the fact that um, Offensive Security gave us a um, quieter desktop environment can very, be very helpful. Another big change with this new, newest version of Kali Linux, or any version of Kali Linux, 2020.1 20, or newer is that um, you're no longer a super user by default. So what that means is normally in Kali Linux in the past, um, you would the, the default user would be the root user. And that can be a problem for security reasons, for obvious reasons, because if someone is able to get access to your computer, they're already root and they can do pretty much whatever they want with the computer. But now, Kali, um, offensive security made Kali Linux a little bit easier to use as a daily operating system, and your default username is Kali. And if you go through the installation process, you can actually change that as well. But because this is live USB, by default we're giving Kali. So I can go and ver verify that by typing in who am I, and it says I'm Kali, I'm not root. And if you, for some reason, want to be root to, to pull off some other tasks that you can't as a normal um, user, you can just type in sudo su, and then now you can see that you are root. Oh. And um, as you, you might have been able to notice that there was actually no password check for um, becoming a super user, which is a problem. So one of the first things I'd recommend doing is um, setting up a password for the root user. So you can do that by typing P-A-S-S-W-D root. And then it's gonna ask you for your password. I'm gonna make it something very secure. And there you go. Now, if I leave a super user, and then if I try to sudo sue again, oh, well, it's gonna take me there because I was just there and I just put in a password. But from now on, um, you will need to type in a password if you wanna become a super user. Okay, next we can talk about some of the newer Kali Linux um, tools that are um, available with this newest version of Kali Linux. And one of the ones I think is the most interesting actually is um, Kali Undercover. And what that does, it just it's a purely cosmetic change to how Kali, Kali Linux looks. So in case you're doing this on a, um, a normal environment, a lot of people can see that Kali Linux isn't a typical desktop environment, even with this new XFCE uh, interface. 
And just to make sure that no one thinks you're up to anything nefarious, you can type in the, can the command Kali Tech Undercover. And so what this does is it reconfigures your desktop environment to look almost exactly like Windows 10, something that a lot more people are comfortable with. And as you can see, it even changes the um, terminal host to look like a Windows directory with the wrong wrong facing slash marks as and everything. And it has the Windows taskbar and the Windows logo and everything. So it really, it might actually be able to, like from a distance, no one would be able to tell that you're um, using Kali Linux and doing um, aircraft and G stuff. So after that, we can go ahead and um, learn how to actually install some packages to Kali Linux. And this is important whether you in install the full version of Kali Linux or um, a lighter version of Kali Linux. Today we installed the full version of Kali Linux. That's why I had stuff like aircrack ng. Um, but we're gonna want to install um, to fully immerse ourselves into the Windows world. We're gonna um, install a power um, a PowerShell emulator in Kali Linux. So to do that, we're gonna use the built-in um, apt repository and apt install PowerShell. Oh, and we're gonna want to do that as a super root. And yes. We're going to give that a couple seconds to install. After that installs, we can type in the pwsh command, and now we have access to the full Windows PowerShell. So in case you want to test some Windows PowerShell commands or you want to use something like that, you can go ahead and test it on your Kali Linux environment instead of having to use a Windows computer. So as you can see, it's a fully interactive PowerShell command with the correct syntax highlighting and everything. Now that's taken care of. Let's go ahead and actually um, leave Windows and go back to the world of Kali Linux. So I can just type in Kali undercover again. And then it's gonna reconfigure it to look like good old Kali Linux. And so these are just a couple of the things you can do with Kali Linux. You can also change like desktop, stuff like that. But if you wanna learn more about a bunch of things you should do when you get started with Kali Linux, you can go check out the 10 things to do after you install Kali Linux article on Nobite. And we also have a video on this channel as well that you can check out. If you like this tutorial, be sure to check out our website where we have hundreds of free articles and videos, as well as premium paid content like the Ethical Hacking Certification Bundle, which features pen testing with OWASP Zap, WordPress hacking and hardening, and the CompTIA Cybersecurity Analyst prep course. Check out the link in the description below. As we just saw, it's easier than ever to get started with Kali Linux. This can grant you full access over useful pen testing tools such as the Aircrack NG Suite. If you run into any problems with this tutorial, you can check out the full tutorial linked in the description. And if you have any ideas for a future video, you can hit me up at Twitter at Nick Gottschall. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.